Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin. Today in the shop, I'm gonna show you my 10 essential steps to hang a really beautifully hung ax. Now I have a really nice plum three and a half pound ax head here, and the handle that I'm gonna be using is a premium heritage 30C handle from Whiskey River. Let's get started. Step one, we wanna assess the head and the handle. So we're gonna look for grain orientation and possible run out in the handle. And we're gonna look for cracks in the head or pitting or excessively thin walls. Here's a few examples of things you might want to look for. This one has a crack in it that started because, you know, maybe this wall was a little too thin and someone maybe tried to hang it a little bit too tight and popped it here. This is a nice ax head, but unfortunately it's got a crack in it, so that'll have to be fixed. Also, a significant amount of mushrooming, which can be cleaned up, but just something to look for. And then also, you want to look for excessive pitting. This is a lot of pitting, which means it's just rusted over the years. Um, Again, this could still be used. It's kind of nice and thick down at the bottom, but pretty thin at the top, so I'd be careful about hanging this one and some mushrooming as well. This is the one we're gonna be going with today. This is a three and a half pound plum. Really nice, clean top and bottom. Not a lot of mushrooming, not a lot of pitting. Nice, thick, even walls. It's a nice head. When you're picking a handle, you wanna look for a good quality handle. Um, these from Whiskey River are really nice. Uh, they have really nice grain orientation, so vertical grain, but you're looking for that type of vertical grain that's running parallel with the ax head because that's where you get that strength when you're chopping like this as opposed to this. This way you can get your, you know, your growth rings to split apart. So that grain orientation running parallel with the ax head. And then the other thing that's almost even more important is grain run out. And grain run out is when your grain, your growth rings start in one spot, but then don't continue all the way to the end of the handle. So they kind of come off to the side. If you have growth rings that run all the way and they don't run out left to right, then you have you know, some really good strength through your handle and you have a handle that'll work really well for you. Step two, I'm gonna chamfer the bottom of the ax eye. You can use files, but I found this works really well and it's a lot quicker. We're gonna chamfer this eye at the bottom. That way when we're seating it on the handle, that bottom edge doesn't bite into the handle. I'm gonna do a little bit of chamfering on the top of the eye as well, just because it got a little bit of a lip. Um, usually it doesn't matter so much. It's really the bottom that's the most important, but this top, we don't want those edges to cut into the wedge when I'm putting that in later, so I'm just gonna clean that up. Step three, I'm gonna draw the eye on the top of the handle and mark your goal depth. The kerf is cut in the middle of the top of the handle, so I'm using that to reference inside my eye and then draw on here. And then these are really just reference lines. Just shows me that I need to take off some material in the middle where it's fat. Front to back, it's really good. This is a really nice uh, shaped top of this handle. Really good and close to my final dimension here. Now I want to mark how far down I want to bring the ax head. And I usually like to leave about an inch or so um, below the ax head before it starts tapering in just to give me some more material to seat it down tighter later if I can. So some people will do it really high, some people will do it really close down to the shoulders, down to where it tapers into your handle. I like to leave a little bit of space. Some of that's just aesthetic, some of it's preference, but also that way if it were to loosen up, I could take the head off, shape this a little more and seat it down just a little further and have that inch to move down on. Step four, shape the handle to the ax eye. These are some of the tools I'll be using. I have a Shinto rasp to do kind of bigger material removal and flat stuff. A half round to get into those curved areas, half round rasp. Some cabinet scrapers to clean up some tool marks. Another uh, four in one, which is uh, rough and smooth, both round, half round and flat. And then just sandpaper to clean up the material as I'm moving it on and off. Uh, 
a point like this, you could be using something like uh, a draw knife or a spoke shave. I really don't have to take a ton of material off of this handle, which is why I'm using rasps. And I feel like I can control rasp a little bit more. It kind of creeps up on that size a little slower. And if you were to use a draw knife, which works really effectively, it's just really quick. And if you kind of cut too deep and, and slice off more than you uh, want to, you can kind of ruin the top of that ax eye before you know it. Now you can use a pencil to put some graphite on the bottom edge of the eye of the head. Then you'll be able to see where that transfers onto the uh, handle. You put it on, push it on and pull it off. And that gives you some black marks. I had some, there's some kind of the rust on the inside that was working before, but it's starting to wear off. So now you can, here we can see where the head is touching and what material I need to remove. Step five, fit axe to handle. Put the head on and off until the bottom of the eye has no gap at your desired depth. And also you wanna make sure the blade's in line with the handle and hung correctly. All right, now that we've got the head sitting down on the handle, we're gonna bring it down probably about another inch to an inch and a half. Uh, but I want to just take a look, make sure that it's hanging straight. Not too closed, not too open. Looks like it's pretty even here. This could maybe come a little bit down. Um, and then keeping the ax bit or the cutting edge in line with the handle. It's really important that that's in line with the handle. And it looks like it's pretty good. Maybe just, just a hair uh, at the bottom, a hair leaning out to the right, my right. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off of the, the side that it's leaning toward, and that'll help it come back in that same direction because we can push it down by removing more material on this side, bring it back in line with the handle. almost down to our right depth. So now I wanna actually use a dead blow hammer and start to seed it a little bit. See if it wants to move further than what I can do. And that definitely moved it down about a quarter of an inch or so. It looks like we probably wanna go about another quarter, but we're getting close to the right depth. This is really nice and clear now. When I hammered it on, took it off, you could see where I'm touching. So nice, clean, touching all the way along the sides. A little bit of a gap in the front, a little bit of a gap here. Good, clean connection here, a gap here, touching here, and then a small gap in the front again. So just like we could see, there were little gaps in those, but really getting a nice connection all the way around. Step six, cut the kerf to the desired depth, which is somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of the eye. One of the nice things about this 30C handle is that they give you a really nice kerf right down the middle of the handle. A lot of handles that you buy will be a little bit off to one side or the other side, a little crooked. This is really nice and straight. So I'm just gonna follow along this and I'm gonna be using a Japanese pool saw to cut this down. You could use a band saw or a regular hand saw, they all work the same, but we're just gonna go all the way down to our final depth. Step seven, prep the wedge for hanging. 
Softwood wedges, you want to have it thicker. Hardwood wedges, it can be a little thinner. This is a really beautiful purple heart wedge from Whiskey River. And I really like using hardwood wedges. Uh, but you know, when you're doing hardwood or softwood like poplar, most handles are gonna come with a poplar wedge, which is perfectly fine. It's just a softwood, so it's gonna compress when you put it into the eye and into the kerf. So if you are using uh, a softwood like poplar, make sure you leave it nice and thick. With hardwoods like Purple Heart or Walnut, which I really like using Walnut, they're all good woods uh, and they're nice and hard, so you might need to thin them out just a little bit more. I'm marking the, the depth of the eye, but I will taper this out a little bit more to the top, so that way it's wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. I want to trim off some of the material above the axe head just because I don't need so much here. I'm gonna trim it down and leave it proud, but I wanna go probably about a half inch now. That way when I put the wedge in, it's not actually stopping me from driving the wedge further down in. So I'm gonna cut it to somewhere about right there. I'm gonna mark on my wedge how far down it can go till it bottoms out. That way I don't try to push it further than that when I'm hanging it. Before I set this wedge home, I want to chamfer the top edge and make sure it's flat. That way when I'm hammering it and when, it's, when I'm sending it all the way home, I'm not chipping off the sharp edges. Step eight, we'll drive the wedge home. We're gonna put some glue on the wedge and we'll begin with some gentle taps on the wedge to get it seated. Then we'll turn it over and we're gonna hit the end of the handle with the wedge on the floor or on an anvil or a hard surface. Oh yeah, that is really nice. No gaps, really clean all the way around. Hung really well, just slightly up in the front. That's the way the Dayton is, which is really nice. Not too high up, not too low. And nice and straight in line with the handle. I'm using a heavier hammer at this point, flipping it over. I'm gonna to try to get that nice and flat on that. It's like a big chunk of steel. And once it's flat, hammering from the end. And take a look as it starts to go in. <clears throat> and if you need to move it forward or back, you can tip it slightly one direction or the other. All right. Step nine, we're gonna trim the wedge off, we're gonna clean up the proud wood that's above the eye, and then we're gonna shape the end of the handle. And when you buy a store-bought handle, it's gonna usually look like something like this, kind of big and chunky at the end with a flat spot to hammer. Uh, I leave it like this until the very end and then I'll shape it. Now the nice thing about the Whiskey River handle is that 
it already comes really nicely shaped. So you have this really beautiful palm swell at the end or a fawn's foot, uh, still a nice flat spot on the end and they give you all this material so you can hang it, but then you can cut it away if you want. Some people like to leave it. I'm not a big fan of the way this looks just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind this off and then round it over and shape it and we'll finish up. This comes really nicely smoothed out already, but kind of got all my tool marks off and then I shaped the end, brought this up to 220 on the belt, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish everything off with 220 piece of sandpaper and work it all the way around. Step 10, we're gonna oil it with boiled linseed oil. Beautiful handle, I'm really happy with this. So there it is, there's your 10 relatively easy steps for hanging an ax head. Um, you know, obviously I'll have to do some more sharpening and cleaning up of this ax head. And I'll do more coats of oil on this, I've just done one coat, but really the kind of rule of thumb, historically you wanna do one coat a day for a week, and then one coat a week for a month, once a month for a year, and then once every year, and then you have a really well-finished, well-seasoned handle that will last you a long time. Thanks again so much Brandon Roos from Whiskey River to, for sending over these 30C handles. Really beautiful handle, really beautiful wedges. Um, you can head over to whiskeyriver.com to get your own one there as well. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think about this and if there's something that you would add, maybe a tip or a trick, we'd love to hear about it. So thanks so much and we'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.